What's up guys? So today I'm gonna be making a corset from this jersey. And if you can't tell, this is Lamella Ball, his jersey. This corset is actually for his girlfriend, which is pretty cool. I already made her this one, which is really cool. I live in Charlotte and he plays for the Hornets, so it's a good little connect worked out perfectly. I actually haven't finished this one. I still have to put the eyelets on, but I'm gonna put those on when I put the eyelets on this one. I do have a pretty detailed corset video already on my channel, but I wanted to make another one. I'm always kind of updating how I do my corsets. Jersey material is just way different, so I wanted to document using that and how I use stabilizer and stuff to kind of make it a workable material for a corset. I know a ton of you guys have been asking for my corset pattern. I'm gonna be using my corset pattern in this video. I honestly just don't know how to digitize patterns. Like, I, I learned how to sew and everything. Like, I'm self-taught, so I don't know how to digitize pattern. And I'm so bad with technology. Like, I, I really don't even know where to start with this. Like, I'm still making it a goal for myself to eventually learn how to digitize patterns and stuff. So you can always get a pattern on Etsy or draft one yourself. Nava Rose, she has a really good corset pattern also for free. I'm pretty sure it's only one size, so you're gonna have to kind of like adjust that. We're gonna get started on this video and I'm gonna show you guys how I tackle crazy materials when I wanna make it into a corset. First, I need to handle this mess of a grab around. The first thing I do is just lay my pattern piece on the jersey. It's looking like that's gonna be a little cut off right there. So I'm gonna have to like deconstruct this and and then add another of this piece up here so I have enough to like fit the corset. This is the design I'm gonna go with. So the first thing I'm gonna start doing is I'm just gonna cut up the sides and I'm gonna actually use this ribbing for the straps like I did on this corset just so I can like preserve all of the details I can of the jersey. But you always wanna cut up a side seam and not like some random place. I thrifted the best like vintage Levi's ever and then I got home and I put them on and someone had literally cut a slit in them like not even on the seam. It was like some of the craziest shit I've ever seen. Don't want to do that. Cut up the side seam. Then I'm going to cut up the seam of that ribbing also because I'm going to use that ribbing. And now I'm actually going to seam rip the ribbing off. I don't have to be too, too careful because the parts I need isn't too close to the ribbing at least. So I'm just going to get it started and then probably like rip it a little bit. Getting started seam ripping is always the hardest part though. I swear. Like once it goes, it usually goes. But come on. Okay, finally. Usually I wouldn't tear it, but this um, jersey material is pretty sturdy, and this is what I did on the other jersey, but when in doubt, don't tear it. You always run the risk of tearing your fabric. All right, one side of the ribbing is off. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I saw it start pulling a little bit right there, so I'm not going to keep pulling it from that side. I'm going to seam rip it. I'm going to buy another one of these jerseys. Second piece of ribbing is off. So usually I would cut the front panel first, but because I have to add extra fabric, I'm actually going to cut all of my other panels first so I can see what excess I have left because I want to like line up the stripes like it originally was. For this next back piece, I'm actually taking out this seam because I'm trying to use this one, but I want to add a little more length to there. So I'm just going to seam rip the cover stitch seam that they have on because that'll give me like a good extra inch. Whenever you're reworking something and you want to save all the fabric that you possibly can, definitely seam rip all of your seams because those little half inches and inches will always add up. So now I have all that extra length. And I'm making sure these lines, the jersey are parallel so the corset doesn't look all janky in the end. Attention to detail is definitely what elevates your craftsmanship and stuff to the next level because you don't want anything looking sloppy, especially when it's something so structured like a corset. So because I need the extra room right here, I'm literally just gonna cut along this line on both sides and like shift that panel up so I have fabric there. I'm gonna serge those excess pieces on and then after I serge them, I'm gonna top stitch them so it lays nice and flat. My pattern is made on a fold, but this is like fabric, so I can't like fold it in half very well. 
and I don't want to in case it like creases or something. So I'm just gonna transfer this into a full size pattern. I'm making some adjustments to my base pattern anyways, as I do when going off of people's measurements. I'm marking the middle, that way I can center everything correctly. Right there looks perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Now this main panel, I have a little bit of this patch on, so I'm gonna see if I can just peel that off. Now that I have all the important parts of the jersey off, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my side panels from the remnant. And once again, I'm lining up the lines on the jersey to make sure everything's gonna be symmetrical, even, and clean. Now, you don't want corsets to have any stretch in them, and a jersey kind of has like a two-way stretch, so we're gonna go ahead and iron some interfacing on. So I'm just gonna take my interfacing and trace all of my pattern pieces once again. So when I use interfacing, I use parchment paper to go over it while I'm heating it up. Because the jersey is sublimated, you can see some of that actually comes off and this will transfer. So I had to use a new piece of parchment paper in between each time heat pressing. So if you're gonna do this to a jersey, just be sure to follow that also. So for the straps, I'm gonna be using this ribbing that I took off of the jersey, but I'm definitely gonna put interfacing on that because it's super stretchy and I wanna make sure the corset fits nice and tight. Once you have interfacing fused onto all of your pieces, you wanna cut the same pieces out, but in your lining fabric, which you wanna make sure has no stretch also. And now it's time for boning. I use different types of bonings for different corsets, but for this one, I'm using a sew-in plastic boning. I use a water-soluble marker to mark all of the spots. You can see those little blue dots. That's where I marked where I want my boning to go. So this way I can measure how long I need to cut each piece of boning. Once all of my boning is cut, it can get kind of sharp on the ends and sometimes it can puncture through the fabric. So just to be safe, I took a bunch of little fabric scraps and I just kind of wrapped them around the edge of the boning and sew them in. This doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure it's not too bulky underneath and on most fabrics, it honestly doesn't even push through. But whenever I'm doing a corset for a client, I definitely add it just so there's no problems down the road and they'll last. Once all the edges are covered, I go in and sew the boning where I marked with my little marker. And you gotta be really careful and really slow when you're doing this because you can't stitch into that middle part of the boning or it'll probably break the needle. And if you stitch too far, then the boning won't be secured to force it. So this is one of those things you really have to just take your time on and don't rush it, especially if you're a beginner and haven't worked with it before. Here's what all the boning looks like on the front panel. Now I'm just sewing the side panel onto the main panel and once that's attached, I flip it out and push my seam down really hard and then top stitch it so it looks nice and clean. I would generally recommend pressing the seams with an iron, but because this is that sublimated polyester, I didn't want it to get the color on my iron. So as long as you finger press your seam really well, it should be fine. And now I'm just gonna attach the back panel to the side panel. And then after that step is where I put my boning for the side seams. Depending on what type of boning you're using and what way you're putting the boning in, you can do it at different steps or it'll all have a different look. So you'll kind of just know that the longer you make corsets, you'll just start to kind of learn that. So now I'm going in and basically doing the same thing with all of my lining pieces, but I'm not adding boning. You do not need to add any boning to the lining because it's already on the main piece and it would just be super stiff. All the lining really does is help cover up all the seams and kind of hide the boning. And then I'm attaching my tag and I only put my tag on the lining so you can't see the stitches from the back. And it's just those little things, you know, just makes your craftsmanship a little better. And now moving on to the straps. Originally, I was going to serge them and pull them inside out, but these were spaghetti straps. And as you can see, it's literally just too thick 
to pull through and make a skinny strap. So I'm using this paracord to lace up the back anyways to give it more of a sporty look. So I just decided I'm gonna use this for the straps. If you're gonna use paracord, you have to trim those little strings and then light the end on fire a little bit, wet your fingers and kind of push it down. It'll just kind of cap off the ends so they don't fray. Once you make your straps, you need to kind of sandwich them in between the lining and the main panels so it ends up having a really finished look and it hides all of the seams of the straps. So now you can see I put my lining and my main panel right sides together and then pinned them all along the top and down the sides. And I only left the bottom open so we'll be able to turn it right side out. And once the pieces are pinned together, I just sew around everywhere they pinned and once again, we're only leaving the bottom open so we'll be able to turn it right side out because we're gonna be putting bias tape on the bottom so it'll be finished. Now, before I turn it right side out, I'm going in and clipping all of my corners. You wanna be careful when you do this and don't cut into your seams, but this will just reduce a lot of the bulkiness. And I'm also going in and trimming down my seam allowance a little bit. Same thing, just so all those curves don't look bumpy and everything looks as clean as possible. And now it's time to turn the corset right side out and you can see that strap is perfectly sandwiched in between the seams and I love that because you can't see where it's attached. It's just so clean. It's like it magically comes out from in between the layers. When you flip it right side out, you wanna make sure to get all of your seams nice and sharp. So I go through and poke all of the corners and everything with like a chopstick just to make sure they're all nice and 90 degrees. You don't want them looking curved or anything. And then once that's done, I go around and top stitch everything with a 1 8 inch top stitch. Top stitching can make your pieces look so professional and finished, but you wanna make sure to really, really take your time with it because sloppy top stitching also can kind of like ruin a project. And you also wanna make your stitch length a little longer when you're doing top stitching. I think I usually put it at like a four on my machine where I would usually sew with like a three or a three and a half. Now I'm putting my last two boning channels in. I just kind of do these ones at the end because I wanna make sure to do it from the outside of the corset just so I can make sure it looks good with the top stitching. You can use steel boning, but I wanted this one to be nice and flexible, so I used a zip tie and rounded off the edges and then just slid those into the last two channels. This next step isn't super necessary, but I'm just gonna go down and sew the bottom together with kind of a basting stitch. I'm gonna stay really close to the edge of the material because I don't want it to show under the bias tape. Now to finish off the bottom, we're gonna use some bias tape. You can either buy some or make your own. I do have a tutorial on how to make your own in my one shoulder top video, but I kind of advise against it unless you're really specific about the fabric you're using because it's just such a pain in the butt to make. I only use a pin on the beginning of my bias tape and I freehand the rest. You definitely want to pin it to start it because you have to fold it in really carefully so it looks perfectly clean, but I would definitely recommend pinning your bias tape down all the way. I just could make a corset in my sleep at this point, so I kind of just know how it works and... I freehand it until then. So you can see when I reach the other side, even though I didn't use pins, I stop and fold it and then pin it down and go over it. That way the bias tape is folded as clean as possible. It can be really hard, but practice makes perfect. And here's what the finished bottom looks like. But unfortunately, that's not the last step. Just one more. We got to go in there and make some holes for our eyelets. If you're constantly making things with buttonholes or holes in general, I would definitely recommend getting one of these gauges. I don't know how I ever lived without one. It makes it so much easier rather than having to like measure the distance in between each hole. So I marked where I wanted all my holes to go with a water soluble pencil so it'll come out of the fabric if it needs to. And now I'm grabbing my hole punch to make the holes. I'm using a hole punch die for my rivet press, but I also used to have like a leather hole punch that worked perfectly fine. You can also punch them by hand with a die and a hammer. Once I have all the holes in one side, I fold the corset in half to be able to perfectly space them on the other side and pretty repetitive, but just go ahead and punch all of those holes out also. Once all the holes are punched, I'm gonna go ahead and use my rivet press to put the grommets in, but you can go ahead and grab a tool off of Amazon. You can put them in with a hammer. There's a ton of different ways to put the eyelets in, but if you're gonna be doing these frequently, I definitely recommend getting some sort of tool, even if it's just a hand punch one. I used to put them in by hand with a hammer and it was just so aggressive and I feel like I could never get them perfectly even. It always ended up super crushed. Now all the hard parts are over and it's time to lace it up. I used paracord so it would match the straps and just kind of 
of give it more of a sporty vibe. I love how it looks. Jerseys definitely aren't the easiest material to make a corset out of, but it's definitely doable. I really had a fun time reworking it just because of all of the details I was able to preserve. Mello's girlfriend, Anna Montana, wore it to the Hornets game and it was so cute. It was a perfect mix of feminine and sporty vibes. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and connect with me on my other socials and turn post notifications on so you see my next video. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.